Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Peter here. Today's video is just a first impressions. Uh, these arrived in the post today. I, I went to the zoologist's website a couple of days ago. They arrived really quickly. Uh, I purchased these myself. Victor was very kind and, and put in a couple of extra for me. Uh, we've got the new camel and the reformulation of beaver. I have smelt the reform already before actually. My impression of the beaver, the new formulation of beaver, was that it's much more mass appealing. It's very cleaned up. I get a lot of linden blossom, which kind of smells a little bit like uh, freshly laundered uh, bed linen. Uh, linden blossom has that vibe to me whenever I smell it. Uh, it has a lot of linden blossom. It's just a lot cleaner and fresher and less animalic, uh, none of the kind of the smoky element campfire. The um, the leather note of the castorium is, is much more toned down, it's much more of a clean, musky, fresh kind of scent to, to me, but I think probably more sellable. Obviously the, the original may be a little bit too niche for a lot of people. So, but we're gonna do first impressions of dragonfly, elephant, the new formulation of panda and camel. So the first thing I noticed was that Victor has updated his sample packs. He's uh, definitely improved them. They, you can feel the, the I don't know what you would call that, satin finish. I'm not sure, it's it's nice anyway. He's, what he's, he's included the artwork basically on one side and the finish is, is a really nice quality. So I like that he's, he's always uh, looking to improve his presentation, it's always spot on, props to that. So new formulation of Panda reads Apple, Lily, Magnolia, Mandarin, Tea, Osmanthus, Ozone, Amber, Earthy Notes, Jasmine, Oris, Patchouli, Civet, Musk, Sandalwood and Vanilla. So there's always a ton of notes listed for, for zoologist perfumes. The opening of this oriental fragrance envelops you in a joyous embrace. Osmanthus, magnolia, lily and juicy mandarin tumble over one another in a happy, happy melee, melee to create a moment of pure joy. As the scent gently settles you find yourself meandering through the shadowy corridor of bamboo where subtle hints of jasmine, amber and musk peek out from behind fresh green leaves leading you to a tranquil oasis. In the quiet calm, a carefree exuberance rolls over you, lifting your spirits to a magical place where pandas roam and play. We'll give this a go. I wasn't a fan of the original panda. It was, well, I don't really like green fragrances in general, and that was just like super green, the bamboo kind of vibe. Um, it was my least favorite. It was a little bit sharp, so, I don't know how similar or different this is going to be from the original. Wow, okay. It's very different from the original. It's a completely different fragrance. Hmm. This is an interesting mix in the, in the opening. Kind of a green apple and lily, maybe. It is a little bit ozonic. It's, there's a sweetness in the background, but it feels like it's not the vanilla. Maybe it's just the apple accord that has this, this unusual sweetness. It reminded me of um, of a. See, I, I got mixed reactions with this. At first, I thought, oh, it's it's quite feminine. And then it hit me like, oh, it smells like um, like a quite a, a mainstream, more designer, masculine, cologne kind of fresh scent that you know, a fresh man col men's cologne. Like um, I don't want to say Dior Sauvage, but along those kind of more mainstream fresh scents, it does have a little bit of a vibe of of that kind of more mass appealing freshness. I think is the point I'm trying to get there. Yeah, it is kind of like a watery kind of apple. 
there's something that I'm reminded of or that I can't quite pin my finger on what it is that it's reminding me of. It's interesting, I like it a lot more than the original Panda. It does smell more mass appealing. I'm not sure it's totally my taste personally, but I think that would sell a lot more than the original Panda. It's uh, kind of watery, fruity, green, but there's a warm sweetness underneath. Uh, I'll be interested in to see how that develops because obviously I'm just smelling kind of more top notes. I would say that one has something about it that smells a little bit more masculine. I'm sure it could be unisex, but I think just the vibes of this kind of almost like uh, Hugo Boss bottled or Dior Sauvage, some kind of clean, fresh kind of scent is, is vibes of that, which is making me feel like it's just a little bit more masculine maybe. But that's just from first impressions, I would have to test that out and skin properly and see how it develops, obviously. So next is going to be Dragonfly. Again, very nice uh, picture on the inside. I, I'm pretty sure Victor sets all these up himself and takes the photos himself. He makes these little sets. That's a, that's a good photo. I like that, the colours are nice. Um, so... Drifting through swaying reeds and billowing stalks of papyrus, a breeze gives chase to a sweet morning mist. Perfect mirror revealed upon still green water, shattered by a sudden shower, casting the gentle romance of lotus and iris into a frenzied, passionate rhythm. High above, tendrils of sunlight nudge away the grey clouds, their warmth drawing dense aromas from the dewy surfaces below. Beneath the dwindling ripples, restless nymphs, stir begins to emerge under the soft moonlight. The newly hatched dragonflies spread fragile, virgin wings poised to explore the world between pool and sky. It's funny, I've been away in Dubai for six weeks and I saw loads of dragonflies and I don't know what they were doing that far offshore, but there was loads of them. Uh, quite big dragonflies flying around the oil rigs. It was very weird because I, I I don't know what they eat offshore. There's the, I don't know how they got there, if they're coming on ships or something. Very weird, but there were loads of dragonflies in Dubai. Top notes of aldehydes, heliotrope, lemon, peony, rainwater, cherry blossom, clover, iris, lotus, rice, Rice is an unusual note. Amber, moss, musk, papyrus, and sandalwood. So, I have heard reviews of this uh, briefly. I definitely get the, the iris note. The aldehyde smells kind of... I don't know, it, it comes across as a fruity floral to me. Like there's a, almost a fruity, oh maybe it's the cherry. Ah, it must be. Yeah, the cherry blossom. Okay, now the cherry is coming even more. Now I said the word cherry. Okay. Aldehyde is such a, a vague term because there's there's loads of different aldehydes. Um, you can have aldehydes of fruits and uh, just loads of different aldehydes. Aldehyde isn't just one thing. I know we're, we're familiar with Chanel number no. five, uh, but that's uh, it's, it's very complicated. There's just there's a ton of different aldehydes anyway. Okay, so my initial impression was that I got um, a powdery, dusty kind of iris. And then I got this kind of sweetness coming through that quickly turns into an obvious kind of cherry note. I don't really get the wateriness, like the pond or the, the bit between the water and the sky. I'm getting powdery cherry. It's very feminine. I get a little bit of the lemony or the peony, just something a little bit more cleaner and fresh coming through in the background. But there's the definite obvious um, candy-like sweet cherry with this dusty kind of iris. I think what makes it more dusty and powdery isn't particularly the iris, I think it's the heliotrope. I think the heliotrope is making it 
um, because that has kind of a dusty almondy sweet powderiness to heliotrope which I think is mixing with the iris and it's making it kind of dusty and powdery and soft and sweet obviously with the with the cherry this is interesting I like it I mean it's it's nice but it's definitely a woman's perfume to me I, I couldn't see a man wearing this at all really to me it's very feminine but quite pretty I get a lot of the the powdery sweetness in the cherry from the first impression I don't really smell too much else with just a little bit of like a lemony freshness maybe a little of the peony interesting um that's definitely more broader appealing it's um, not super niche niche I think a lot of people would like that uh, in the same vein that a lot of people I think would like nightingale um, and that was another quite mass appealing kind of women's perfume I think that is in the similar vein in terms of uh, how approachable it is it's very easy going uh, spring day evening women's perfume so next up we'll do elephant and elephant reads huge trees quake at their approach vulnerable leaves shuddering as the ground rumbles under heavy footsteps as the ground rumbles under heavy footsteps they come with appetites as massive as their lumbering bodies nothing is spared from their bottomless hunger trees stripped bare roots upturned even the tiniest blooms cannot escape their grasp when the behemoths move on they leave behind a path of destruction yet what often looks like carnage is actual a renaissance the elephants the elephants fulfill a vital role purging the delicate ecosystem allowing new life to flourish with top notes of tree leaves dajaling tea dajiling tea sorry magnolia cocoa coconut milk incense jasmine woody notes amber musk patchouli and sandalwood so that is quite a mix of, of notes again uh, so this is elephant one of my favourite notes in perfume is sandalwood, although I like um, like genuine real sandalwood, not particularly uh, synthetic sandalwoods, but real sandalwood is beautiful. Oh wow, oh, I recognise that. Um, what's it called? It smells like Cis3 Hexanol. I th is it hexanol? Cis three hexanol. It's a it's a molecule, a synthetic that smells like um, uh, like leaves, like green leaves, or a little bit like grass, uh, like green grass or green leaves, kind of a bit of both. I get a lot of that. It's it smells very green, uh, leafy. Uh, it smells like you're in a canopy or Imagine kind of wet green grass and uh, leaves, thick foliage green leaves. I, I don't really enjoy that note personally too much. It's used by Jean-Claude Elena actually to make a green apple accord. He combines it with uh, furanone and I think uh, benzyl acetate. Uh, those three notes together uh, create a, a green apple accord. I get a, a wisp of the cocoa and it smells dusty like dry cocoa chocolate uh, dust powder. I do get the sandalwood. So I get a lot of the cystery hexanol, the leaf, the green. I get a little bit of the cocoa chocolate but it's a dusty powdery chocolate. Only just a hint of it, it's not much. I obviously get the, the, the sandalwood is a, quite a, a, a larger component to the fragrance. I'm not sure, I think maybe just a hint of kind of an incense -y kind of vibe. And jasmine, I definitely smell jasmine. This is okay. Um, I'm not a fan really of, of the leafy note. I don't like green fragrances in general though, that's just my taste. Um, but that the leaf note is very very strong if you're familiar with that particular note I get a lot of that um, It'd be interesting to see how that develops 
but I can smell the jasmine is definitely uh, coming through more in the mid. So I think uh, from a first impression, I would say that's going to develop more into a jasmine and sandalwood combo. Uh, just from the first impression, it does smell like the jasmine is going to be kind of a main player in the mid there with the sandalwood. Anyway, a camel. The image for camel is very cool with the with the warm resins there, frankincense, myrrh. So this has notes of dried fruits, frankincense, palm dates, rose, amber, cedar, cinnamon, incense, jasmine, myrrh, orange blossom, civet, musk, sandalwood, oud, tonka, vanilla, and vetiver. So there's a ton of notes on here. On a trek through the unforgiving desert, starting point and destination are indistinguishable from one another. Terracotta hue dunes twist and wreathe. Uh, their shapes ever shifting. Only the merciless sun and aloof constellations can be trusted to point the way. Weighed down by treasures, some tempting their eyes with the glittering sheen, others enticing the taste buds with exotic aromas. The camel plods towards far off marketplace. Water is but a dream for now, the taste of sweet dates, a distant memory. There is nothing but an endless ocean of sand. I've actually ridden a camel in, in Egypt, quite an experience, and I have a taste for dates. I actually never used to like dates until I started working in Dubai, and they have amazing dates in Dubai. Emirati dates are, are very, very tasty. Uh, th there's one particular one that I like that almost has a caramel taste to it. It smells like just caramel dates, very, very nice. So I like dates. I would hope date is is a is a nice note in this if it comes through so we'll give this a spray camel oh jesus i get this vet whoa that is funky it's Okay, first of all, I got uh, sweet uh, resins or and sweet dried fruits. I definitely get there's like a sticky dried fruit that reminds me a lot of uh, Serge Luton's uh, fragrances that have um, that kind of sweet um, dried fruit accord. But it's mixed with a punch of civet. It's um, civet to me. People describe it as pissy, like like Uranus, <laughs> and it, to me it doesn't smell anything like that. It's more fecal, like it smells a little bit like diarrhea. Um, it is um, a dirty, animalic note. So you have to be a little bit brave. A good, really good example of, of, of civet in perfume is uh, Ducita's do you see to Paris they have the Oud Infini? That has a real pff of, of civet in that, if you want a good reference for what civet smells like. Okay, I get the the initial blast was civet that was like, whoa! Uh, and then you get this kind of warm, sweet, dried fruits and kind of ambery kind of... Um, maybe it's the myrrh coming through. You definitely get the a little bit of the frankincense because you have that kind of cooling, uh, cooling vibe. To me, myrrh smells warm and sweet, and frankincense is kind of the opposite. It kind of has a fr almost like a freshness, like it clears your airways, almost like menthol in a way. It's it's very a cooling uh, effect. But um, yeah, I get uh, a dried, almost a boozy kind of dried fruit. Okay, the civet's toning down. That kind of um, animalic, dirty, fecal notes has, has kind of faded. I wouldn't say this is my taste, personally. And I, I really don't like a uh, noticeable civet. Uh, just, just too much for me. I'm not a fan of the animalic, dirty, skanky stuff. But it, it, it was, it tones down quickly, it's not too crazy for too long. I think what's coming through a little bit is the sweetness of the cinnamon and maybe a little bit of the rose, but I still get a lot of frankincense and myrrh. Interesting. Yeah, it has a little bit of a vibe of Serge Luton's to me. I think you need to enjoy the skanky opening there. You need to be a little bit braver than me. From a first impression, they're not completely my personal taste. 
but Camel is interesting if you can get past the opening. Um, maybe not particularly a fan of Elephant personally, um, just because of the leaf note that I'm not too keen on. Dragonfly. Okay, going back to Dragonfly, this has changed. Hmm. I can't decide if it's shampoo or like a body lotion maybe. It's reminding me a little bit of either a herbal essence kind of shampoo or a scented women's body lotion, but it's still very feminine. Oh, okay, going back to Panda, this has changed. It's a little bit more earthy. There's like a dirty note. Oh, okay, there's earth listed. Okay, so this maybe has just a tiny bit of that soil note that comes through that you might be familiar with, with Bat. I think it has just a little bit of, of, of the earthy soil note. But again, it has this um, designer kind of uh, fresh cologne, man's fresh cologne smell. I can't work out maybe what, what that is. I guess it must be the apple accord. Or maybe it's the ozonic note that's making it like that. Going back to elephant now at the end, I still smell the, the leaf note. Okay, this one feels maybe a little bit linear. I think maybe the the cis three hexanol leaf thing is maybe probably quite a long lasting note because I, I know how potent it is. It still ha really hasn't changed much. Uh, that's it guys, first impressions done. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you again next time. If you tried them, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you want me to review a particular one, uh, let me know. I'll see you guys very soon. Take care, bye bye.